Today we'll be talking about complications of myocardial infarction and their treatment. Basically, heart is supplied by coronary arteries. Any blockade to the coronary artery by either thrombus, emboli, or a spasm of coronary artery leads to the unprogrammed cell death of the myocardium, and this is known as myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction carries high mortality rate, not only during acute phase, but also weeks after the acute event. And complications are therefore divided according to the time frame after an acute attack with pathophysiological mechanism involved. Now, moving on to the complication, from beginning up to a, uh, up to a week, patient may present with uh, various um, complications like cardiac arrhythmia. And usually, uh, it could be a ventricular, supraventricular, or conduction block. And it is due to myocardial death and scarring and it is a one of the important cause of death before reaching the hospital and the since we know that uh, there is unprogrammed uh, death of the myocardial myocardium uh, this leads to the uh, start of the inflammation which leads to peri infarction pericarditis and this uh, in inflammation uh, leads to the various symptoms in the patient like uh, chest pain pericardial friction drug or even a uh, small pericardial effusion. However, uh, this uh, pericarditis is usually uh, self-limited, but however, in some of the cases, this inflammation uh, may lead to the weakening of the muscle of the heart, and hence the patient may present with papillary muscle rupture or interventricular septal rupture. And the symptoms uh, in both of the cases can be mild, uh, mild like uh, chest pain or murmur or arrhythmia to severe like sync of heart failure or even some cases uh, in severe cases the patient may present with cardiogenic shock and pulmonary uh, edema and for up to two weeks after an acute uh, attack of myocardial infarction uh, patient may present with a ventricular pseudo aneurysm and ventricular free wall rupture and in cases of ventricular free wall uh, rupture patient usually presents with uh, uh, the uh, symptoms, uh, very severe symptoms, uh, like uh, due to the free wall rupture, there will be cardiac tamponade and uh, actually there can, patient may have a uh, sudden death. And you should know that uh, ventricular pseudoandrism is uh, usually formed uh, by the pericardium and there is no involvement of endocardium and myocardium. Hence, uh, they, it has got high uh, risks of chances, risks and chances of rupture than the true aneurysm. And uh, similarly, in case of ventricular free wall rupture, uh, the patient may develop certain cardiac tamponade and even certain cardiac death. And from uh, two weeks to several months, patient may present with other complications like true, true ventricular aneurysm and uh, to a ventricular aneurysm, uh, which is uh, due to the outward bulge of the ventricle, which is uh, seen in every uh, contraction. And the patient may uh, present with uh, chest pain or murmur or arrhythmia or syncope and heart failure, or even a uh, patient may present with a rupture of the true ventricular aneurysm leading to the cardiac tamponade. And uh, the next uh, complication that occurs, that can occur even after the several months after the acute myocardial infarction is post cardiac injuries and Syndrome or Dessler syndrome, and it is an autoimmune reaction. You actually cardiac antigen uh, are released after an injury of the myocardium, and uh, it deposits uh, deposition of uh, immune complexes in pericardium occurs, and this leads to the inflammation, and this is known as the Dessler syndrome. Now moving on to the uh, management of these complications, uh, the ventricular dysfunction and congestive heart failure are managed by the use of various drugs like angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and angiotensin uh, receptor blockers and vasodilators like nitrates. And in cases who in patient uh, who develop cardiogenic shock, uh, prompt reperfusion should be done. And in patient who has got uh, right ventricular infarction, volume expansion should be considered. Now moving on to the various arrhythmia, we should first correctly identify the type of arrhythmia. If the patient has got ventricular premature bits, uh, drugs like uh, beta blocker should be used and we should also look for any other electrolyte imbalance uh, and if there is any presence of uh, hypokalemia or hypomagnesemia, we should promptly correct that. And for the cases who has got ventricular uh, fibrillation, we should uh, go for ven electrical cardioversion or defibrillation therapy. And in the patient who has got ventricular 
muscular tachycardia, we can go for amiodarone and uh, procainamide. And if the patient is hemodynamically unstable, then we have to give the electro uh, electroversion. And in the patient who has got toxide deep pointes, uh, the magnesium sulfate is the drug of choice. And patient who has got, uh, as in patient who has got accelerated idioventricular rhythm, uh, you should know that uh, it is usually benign after the fibrinolytic therapy. So only careful monitoring will be okay for such patient. If the patient develops supraventricular arrhythmia, then we should give uh, drugs uh, like beta blockers and calcium channel blockers like verapamil and tiltiasm. And if the patient who has got has got atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter uh, with heart failure, then the drug of choice is uh, decoxin. And even we can use synchronized electroshock. And if the patient develops a sinus bradycardia, uh, the drug that is given is atropine. And if uh, the patient uh, doesn't improve, then we can even go for electrical pacing. And the inpatient who has uh, who develops atrioventricular and intraventricular conduction dystroventures, we can go for temporary electrical pacing. And in some patient, the patient may even need permanent pacing. And the patient who ha after who, ha who has got uh, recurrent chest discomfort, uh, we have to always uh, look for uh, revascularization. And uh, if the patient develops pericarditis, the drug of choice is NSAIDs, and that is aspirin, 650 milligram four times daily. And if the patient develops other thromboembolic uh, phenomena like DVT or left ventricular mural thrombi, then systemic anticoagulation should be started. And the patient, if the patient developed uh, left ventricular aneurysm, uh, then we the Patient's patient may, might even need the surgical repair. Thank you.